Now, before we go further, let me start very simple here and show you a quick demo of how you can get your data into the Elastic Stack first. So we're going to do some custom logs onboarding with Elastic Agent. Before we start with loading that log file into the cluster, let me quickly explain what we have for our demo application so it makes a bit more sense to you. We have an e-commerce shop here. And in this e-commerce shop, we want to display advertisements to the customers. So up here, we have this panel that says polo shirt for sale 10% off. These ads that we display here are being served by one of our microservices written in Java. And sometimes we have a bit of a problem where the panel doesn't show anything. And that's not good. We want to diagnose what's going on. One thing that we could do is we could jump into that host and try to read that file. So we have a log directory here where log adds. There's a file called adverts.log. And in this file, we see these log messages. We could try to grab and tail this, but we have this running on many hosts. In fact, in the production setup, uh, we actually have this running in Kubernetes, but more on that later. If we want to index this file here, there's a few easy steps that we'll have to follow. First, what we want to do is we want to go into the integrations page, which is listed under management down here. This gives us an overview of all the available integrations that Elastic has to offer right now. Currently, it's 265. We are only interested in custom logs for the time being. So we're going to search for that and select this, and then click the blue button to add custom logs to our installation. The only setting that we need to fill in here is the log file path. And in our case, it was var log adds adverbs.log. You can also use wildcards here, or you can add multiple lines if that's what you need. Everything else we can leave as a default. We're also going to collect system logs and metrics here, because why not? Click Save and Continue, and it should take a few seconds for this to be saved. Um, so this right now here is an integration that will collect that log file for us. This integration has been added to a policy, and this policy we can now add to one of our agents. Kibana just noticed that we don't have an agent yet, so we should probably change that by enrolling an agent into the stack here. Clicking that button here brings us right to the installation instructions that we can copy with a single click. And you can also tell there's multiple different ways to install Elastic Agent depending on the operating system. Let's head back to our terminal and just paste in the command that we just copied. As a first step, it's going to download Elastic Agent, unpack it, and then it will ask us if we would like to install this as a service. We confirm this by typing uh, yes one time here. And within a few seconds, I would expect that it's getting enrolled and started. Now, I should probably mention something about this enrolling real quick. What happened here is that the agent itself doesn't need any kind of configuration file locally. Simply by enrolling it with this token that we copied in the UI, it's now regularly checking in with the fleet functionality of the stack and asking if there's any new configuration that it should pull. So instead of needing to roll out a configuration file to each of your hosts, it's all centrally managed, which is really convenient. So with this being installed now, let's take a look at our Kibana again. We can see that it successfully enrolled the agent, and it already confirmed that data is now flowing into the system. We can view this enrolled agents as well, and we can tell here that this host here is now active and healthy, which is great. Let's take a look at some of our data. Jumping over into Discover here and selecting the logs index pattern, we can now see that we have data flowing in from our log file. And this is pretty much it. This was all that we needed to do, um, really only providing that log file path that we want to read from. If we now inspect the data here, it looks pretty good. I mean, we have all of our data here. It's about 20,000 documents that we had in this file, or 20,000 lines, sorry. But if you look closely, you might notice a few things here. Um, first of all, we have a timestamp column over here, and then there's a second timestamp there. If you compare these two timestamps, you might notice that our service timestamp is actually from 2021. 
So I've been using a log file that's a bit older by now, but it's still showing up as recent data here. And this is really the only important thing that you will need to fix for your log data. By default, what we do um, with the agent or also with FileBeat previously is that we read the log line. And if it's not structured data like JSON, for example, then we just assume that the event happened right now. And usually this may not be a huge problem. Imagine your service logging data and the agent picking up that data straight away. Then the timestamp is pretty much exactly the same. There might be a difference of a few milliseconds, but oftentimes that ne that's negligible. But especially for importing older data, or if you expect delays between generating the log and picking it up, you should really put some effort into parsing this timestamp. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So as a first step here, we are going to copy one of these logs just one of them should be enough for now. And then we're gonna head over into DevTools into the Grok debugger. We're gonna paste this one line in, and now we will come up with a Grok pattern that is able to extract the timestamp here. Grok is a bit of an abstraction language on top of regular expressions. So we don't have to write in a regex here, instead we can use predefined patterns. The timestamp that we have here is a standardized format that we've been using, which is always useful. And we're gonna cover more of these um, general recommendations at the end of the talk. But uh, the format here is called ISO 8601. And this is the timestamp format. And next we then have some kind of data. We're not really sure what. So we're just gonna do greedy data and place this into the message field. In fact, the timestamp we also need to uh, selectively save into the timestamp field. So let's click simulate here. This now gives us a message and a timestamp. Perfect. So now we have the timestamp separately and um, that's all we need um, right here. Continuing then, we're gonna copy this Grok pattern and create a quick ingest pipeline. Heading over into stack management, ingest pipelines, we are going to create a new pipeline here. Let's give this a quick name, um, my logs timestamp. And then we'll add a processor. First processor we need is Grok. That's the thing we just tested. So let's just paste this in here. So timestamp and message are being extracted. Uh, we wanna do this from the default message field. Let's also ignore any failures or if the fields is missing. This is always a good idea if um, you just wanna proceed without parsing if there's any issues. So we're adding this here. And then next, um, another thing that we need is a date processor, which looks at the timestamp field and then once again, uses this ISO 8601 uh, method for parsing it. Everything else should be default, that's okay. This UI offers a way for testing the functionality as well, but we're gonna again skip that for now. Um, that's good enough for us. So let's save the file and see the pipeline here. Um, again, this, this should be all good. Let's just copy the pipeline name maybe real quick. What we can do now with this is uh, we could use this pipeline for automatically parsing parts of our data as they flow in. So let's head back to um, fleet and take a look. Uh, so we have our agent, it has a policy. The policy right now is configured to do system logs and metrics as well as the custom logs. And if we click on this uh, integration, we can see these settings that we previously added. Now, what we wanna do for all future data is we want to give this a pipeline called my logs timestamp, which enables us to properly extract these timestamps um, as they happen to come in. So let's save this. Um, and you can see now how it's going to be pushing this configuration out to the agents. Uh, this is the centralized management that I mentioned before, which is really convenient because we don't actually have to go onto the host right now and reconfigure something which is great if this is running across multiple or even hundreds or thousands of hosts. I'm gonna click save and deploy, and this will get active within a few seconds from now. If we now have new log data coming in, the timestamp parsing will be done automatically. In fact, let's maybe just test this real quick. So we have in our log path, um, this adverbs log. If I tail this file, um, we can see that there's lots of old data here. If we 
where to tail this and write this into uh, 10 lines into just a different file. Let's just call it uh, a.log. And then we're gonna um, cut this file. So there's just 10 lines in here. We're gonna push them back into adverts.log. So 10 additional log lines. And then we're gonna head back into Kibana and see what happened. Going back into discover, um, we can obviously see that the logs from the, the first ingestion are still here. I'm gonna take care of those in just a minute here. For now, let's maybe just look back two years or so. Um, and there you go, 2021, we have nine logs in here. Uh, these are the 10 lines that we just pushed to the file. As you might've noticed here, there was an empty line as well. So it's only nine logs that show up right now. The only thing left to do now um, is to fix those logs up here. Oh, by the way, please do not, um, do, not do this thing that I just did with um, catting the file to itself again, that might result in duplicate entries unless you take care of those separately. And this is really just for, for testing purposes. So we still need to fix um, the 50,000 that we have over here. The way to this, to this is um, relatively simple as well. What we're going to do for those is we are going to use an update by curry request. We're going to use DevTools as well for this. This is obviously totally optional. If we're fine with just having correct live data, then we could stop right here. So what we want to do is we want to do a post request on this logs index, and we're going to do an update by curry request here. And the curry that we have for us right now could just be a match all three. Um, if you already have other data in here, you should probably be more specific. So for example, um, you might be using a query string query, but we're not gonna go into this right now. And then all we need to do is we need to specify that pipeline. Um, I think it was called my logs timestamp. What this does now, it's gonna find all of the logs that we have and it's gonna push them through this pipeline that we created previously. This will take a few seconds to finish here. There we go, it's already done. So if we now head over to Discover and looking at the last two years of data, we see that all of our documents are now correctly indexed and are present um, up here in February, 2021, as we wanted them to be. So to summarize again, the most important thing to watch out for when ingesting custom logs is that you manage to extract the timestamp from your log data and put it into the correct timestamp field using grok or dissect filters, as well as that date processor. And that's all you need to do. Everything else is optional. We don't need to do any additional parsing. We're still gonna talk about it here in just a second, but for now, it really is optional. So just to recap real quick, we started with this very unstructured logging at first, so we had the data in the stack, but we still had the timestamp that was conflicting in our data. And then we added an ingest pipeline that extracts the timestamp and the message separately, and then does a bit of um, a date processor on this timestamp field to eventually get us into this state here, where we have the log messages cleanly extracted and we have the timestamp, the, the correct timestamp here, and only this timestamp. The log message itself is still unstructured. We did not extract the log level. We did not extract any of these numbers in here. We did not put any effort into really parsing that message in addition to this. And that's what we often hear at Elastic, that this parsing of log messages is very tedious and logging is hard and it's very hard to get the data into the stack to get it parsed properly. And I wanna show you today that unstructured data is good, unstructured data is great. I'm sure that many of you have been doing some kind of an investigation into an outage or some kind of issue that you've been seeing. And you had a problem at some point because you were missing some log data. And wouldn't you have been glad at that point to just have some kind of log data available to you, even if it's unstructured? 